Okay, let's go. Mm-hmm. Déjà. Déjà. Après. Mm-hmm. If you want me to talk a little bit, uh, okay, because the tours are late, okay? <laughs> so welcome, my name is Angela. Uh, we are here in Linda Freitas. Uh, it's here since 1920. You can see over there. In Melinda, it's the name of the, the own of the mother of the actual owner of this, uh, this company, okay? Uh, but we just started bottling wine in 1997. Mm. Until 97, all the wine that we produced, we sell to other producers in the area and buy five liters, a jar of five liters, sell to, to people that come here and uh, want to buy wine. Um, here, I'm showing you all the grapes that we are studying and all the grapes that we have wine actually. We start with two grapes, mm-hmm. but now we have 29 different grapes. Yeah, yeah. we start with 60 hectare and now we have uh, 450 hectare, okay? It's more or less 450 football camps, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. The evolution was really, really big. Um, but because the soils and the weather, they are really, really good, okay to the to the grape to the grape area so we start uh, using other grapes and start studying grapes that are from other countries like france like Mm -hmm. spain and italy and actually it's very interesting because this area this area yeah it's very very hot in the summer okay but we are in the middle of two rivers Mm -hmm. it's very important to get some acidity to the wine Mm -hmm. with no acidity the wine is too too fruity Mm -hmm. okay too heavy Mm -hmm. um the soils are really good to produce and to grow the grapes here in this area. Of course, in this area, um, because it's very hot, wines are strong, full-bodied and structured, okay? Even whites are really fruity and with some body, okay? Uh, We have here some samples of each grapes that we have, okay? Now, in this time of the the year, uh, we don't have grapes, of course, uh, because they are growing, but now you can see even differences between between of them, for example, with the leaves, the shape are very different. The evolution of the, the grapes are really different because the harvest it starts in the middle of August, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. But we start with some grapes, and some grapes it just start in September uh, because the evolution is different. This one it's much smaller, so the harvest of this going to be like in September, and this one the evolution it's much more. Um, it's now, so you're gonna harvest this one in August, okay? The evolution in the grapes are really different. We don't pick them at the same time, of course. We start with the grapes, the white grapes, because of the, the uh, because of the summer and the, it's the, the, the sun. Um, the maturation is different, so it's much more earlier compared with the white red wines, okay? And we have all of these grapes here. We have a lot of different colors also because our bottles have also different labels with different colors. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you don't remember the name of the grape, but we remember the, the color of the, the bottle. Mm-hmm. This one is the, the grape of this area, Castellon. Uh, we have 200 hectares of this grape. And we have old vines of this grape over 60 years also, until 90 years. Um, it's a lot. This, this grape produces a lot. They are really big. It produces really, really, and very interesting wine and extractor wine mm-hmm. also. If you have any doubt, okay. <laughs> For example, Muscatel. It's a sweet grape. Muscatel Rosso. It's very, very sweet, uh, and it's <laughs> that's yeah, really, really like. You can see the difference between this one and the Syrah. The Muscatel we start almost in the beginning of August, the harvest, and then this one because the growing part, the growing process is different, it's slower, so we pick them after, okay? Because you can see there's no leaves here, and there are also lots of big leaves already. This is one. This one is just a garden of samples, okay? Just samples of each grape that we that we are studying. We are studying now, for example, Cabernet. It's a grape that it's not very easy to find in Portugal. I think we are the only producer, producer having Cabernet, for example. Uh, but this area is very interesting. 
it's not like for example Douro Valley in the north we have a lot of mountains this is very flat here so it's very easy to study and to harvest and to work in the, the fields okay that's why we have also um, uh, easy going way to produce wine and having wine like this Yeah, 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 we have new new grapes also. Mm -hmm. For example, this grape it's very easy to find in Douro Valley mm -hmm. to produce port wine. Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very easy. And this one it's from the Vinho Verde region, yeah. the green wine region. Mm -hmm. It's the premium grape from that area. But here we have also it you cannot call it green wine because in this area it's not the area of the Vinho Verde. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a white wine, regular white wine, and the flavors are really different. Are more, much more fruity in the the north side. It, they are very mineral with a very nice acidity, and sometimes they have bubbles. But in this area, because it's very hot, <laughs> it's more full-bodied and fruity. Okay. Well, you prefer whites, reds. Whites or reds that you prefer? For red? No, no, no just uh, red. I prefer in winter. Oh, okay. Okay. White, so okay. Summer, of then. course. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, for example, white wine that mm -hmm. are really structured. They are nice to take in the winter also mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they have oak. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more full-bodied. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, easy wine, easy white wine. It's nice in the winter. Yeah, mm -hmm, with some yeah, fish yeah. in the oven. It's yeah. very nice also. And, and winter, and cold winter, better than uh, sweet drink. Yeah, of course. Cold. Yeah, Muscatel is nice in the, uh, yeah, in the winter. Aguardente. 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 <laughs> that one is very strong. <laughs> so this building um, has just three years, this part of the building, okay? We start in a very small uh, house, uh, the production, but now we are producing 12 million liters per year. That means a lot. Actually, in Portugal, we are not Mm -hmm. A lot of producers having that type of uh, quantity, yes, okay? Yeah. And so we can call it that we are a nice and a big producer, okay, in Portugal. Because Portugal is small, okay? But now with evolution and uh, the changes and the process of wine and uh, the demanding and the sellings and everything, mm -hmm. we are growing a lot, okay? So um, you have to have big machinery like this, and modern machinery. Mm -hmm. Open So because we are big, it's impossible to have the old way and traditional way of uh, of uh, producing wine by feet. We have, uh, all everything is very big and just machinery, of course. <laughs> Twelve million. Uh, we have to add lots of feet. Uh, all we, Portugal. Yeah, mean. all Portugal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, so we have to have a lot of big machinery. 
we have the stainless steel beds over here and then we have the pressing machine okay and if it's a red we start in the fermentation still over there and after you go to the pressing machine when it's a white one it's the opposite we, we change we change the, the skin of the grape we press we smash the skin and the liquid of the grape it's going to the fermentation side and the, it's the opposite process and we, everything starts here of course now uh, it's not working because it's just in the time of the harvest after the harvest um, sometimes one red wine stays here for like for example 20 days it's getting color and body more time and in this fermentation we're going to be more tannins and um, uh, color and the structure also and going to be better okay in the time after this the first step one goes to the other room where it's going to be filtered okay and going to change and uh, going to have the sediments away from the wine okay it's going to be filtered when the wine is really really young wine is no more sediment when it's just a drink by itself it's a young wine and fresh when it's to stay and to age a little bit in the, the bottle wine has a little bit of sediment the sediment is going to give the, the best trait to, to, to be being older Okay, so in this side we have also a very important thing that it's the cork, um, the cork process. We don't take it, it's very, very nice. Very nice. Yes. yes, this is very difficult to, to have this part of the bar yes. of the tree. Mm -hmm. In general, they cut two, two parts like this. Mm -hmm. This right here is getting two to it, but this one just one, it's I don't know where how they get they, they mm -hmm. the, the, the bar from the, the tree. We work with Amuri, it's the company of the bar and the, the core, okay? And they give us the samples to people see how we can make the, the, the core. We have the tree, of course, here, and 99 years you can get the bar from the tree, okay? Just 99 years, you have to wait 9 years to have this, uh, this part of the tree. So it's a process, a very long process. And it's very expensive, cork is very expensive. And they smash it like this, and then you have a machine that makes this this thing, okay? And then we have the the cork by itself, yeah. And natural cork, it's an expensive cork. It's the best cork. When you have something, uh, the rest of the cork is smash it, and you glue it, and you have the most cheap, the cheapest cork. Okay. We have, for example, this Syrah, the Syrah, the harvest of 2005. In 2018, Vinalis was the best Syrah and the best wine all over the world. Yeah, it was very important to us. Just after that, the demanding and the searching of Emelinda Freitas was growing a lot after this. This is our lab. Here, just a small lab because uh, it's the quality lab. And just to check every sample every day because it's very important, it's to human consume, so we have to take a lot of care with the, the, the drinking wine, yeah. <laughs> Here we have the Muscatel, Muscatel is also very good. Muscatel <laughs> is very important to us. Muscatel, uh, you cannot call it that it's a, a regular wine, no, it's a fortified wine. It's a fortified wine, it's more or less the same process as doing a port wine. Uh, because in the middle of the fermentation, when the wine is inside that stainless steel vessel over there, we stop the fermentation, adding some vinegar spirit. And that's why the one, this wine is very sweet and strong, because it's spirit, brandy by itself. Okay? It's very, very interesting. And something more like a digestive. Okay? <laughs> and it's very good. <laughs> After that side, one goes to this side where it's going to be filtered and stored a year for several times, okay? And outside, we have also these beds outside, big beds. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are in the fourth and fifth generation of women. It's not very common to find this type of business and company with just women. Um, and it's very important. Even workers, 80% are women. Okay? 
now you're gonna see the bottling area, okay? Everything is bottled in this area, okay? Barrels from uh, from two 
225 liters here. The best wine has the best oak and new oak. That's why our wines, you feel a lot of the oak and the aroma and the characteristic and the really structure and gastronomy. That's because we have very good oak and very small barrels. Here, for example, we have a lot of different brands already. Here, for example, this brand is not easy to find in Portugal. And you don't have more space now. <laughs> for example, in this side, we have all the brands, Irmelin, the Freitas brands, to sell in the national market that are easier to find. Since no campus, no campus, it's the the day-to-day -day wine, it's the cheapest wine that you have. And it's the name of the husband of the actual owner, okay? <laughs> it's the cheapest wine, okay? And she, she, the name of her, uh, the owner is Leonor, and the top wine is called Leodonor, the best wine, that is her wine, it's fair. <laughs> and then we have Terras do Po. Terras do Po was our first brand. The translation is Dust Plant. Because it's the owner, it's the um, uh, it's to to thank it's to thank to the, the land that we harm. It's called Fernando Po. It's the name of the, the man that was a founder. And Po, it's the, it's dust because this area is very dusty area. And then we have our top sellers here in the national market, Dona Irmalinda. We work a lot with the, the colors and stripes. And you see a wine with the, this type of stripes, it's Dona Melinda um, wine, okay? It's very common, yeah. When you see a, a bottle of this with the stripe, in general, they, are, they belong to Melinda. And here you can see, um, a few minutes ago, we've seen the grapes and the vineyards and their colors. And now, as you can check, the, the single ones, the 100% one where they have different colors. Because it's easier, okay, when you're gonna find this, this wine. Sometimes you don't remember the name, but we remember the color of the, the label. We have white and muscatel also. Muscatel. <laughs> and they are also producing sparkling wine. Sparkling wine, the culture, uh, it's growing a lot. Because the sparkling wine is not just uh, to, to, to drink with cakes or just to celebrate, no. Uh, nowadays you can find easily in our own sparkling wine because they are very interesting to start a meal, for example, to clean your mouth and do, to, to start the dish, okay? They are very, very um, interesting. But the big difference between the sparkling wine and the champagne in France, these ones are really, really much uh, not so expensive compared with the champagne, of course. But the method, the process, it's the same as the champagne. Yeah. I'm going downstairs. Also a pool, not wine pool, okay, <laughs> just water. <laughs> In the summer it's very very good, believe me. <laughs> this is our first building, okay? It's the original building of the Emelinda Freitas. But because of the evolution and all the selling and everything, we have to that building of course uh, now it's just like a museum where you can find some story uh, story over there and one in Melinda uh, she lived in that house over there uh, she's not alive anymore she died a few years ago uh, but the family used to live in this house now it's empty just with the security guards yeah and you have a pool <laughs> maybe rent maybe rent yeah maybe one day yeah maybe one day yeah it's very nice to wake, 
to go to the swimming pool and then have a, a glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. because women are very important in this company and because of their strength it was possible to be uh, the, the company that we are today, okay? We have some underwear, for example. <laughs> it was a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> big My women and big clothes, yeah. <laughs> this is the old lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And this is the actual owner, it's Leonor. Mm -hmm. And their mother and Melinda. Mm -hmm. Now we are in the fourth generation of women and we're gonna have the fifth generation, it's Joana, it's the, the daughter of the Leonor. Mm -hmm. And here we have some artifacts from the, the fields, who work in the fields mm -hmm. across. Some of these artifacts you can also find nowadays because, uh, for example, the smaller producers it's easy to find these type of this style of products here and this is to, to put seeds in the soils, this one, sometimes you can also find this one. And here, it's the old way and the old method of producing wine. Here, it was everything was smashed, the grapes were smashed here in this, this um, big vat in here, cement vat. Actually, uh, we put grapes inside these measures over here and they were on this side. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, it's completely different from nowadays. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, now it's completely different. Just big machine, you know? A few years ago, just like that, yeah. And in the end of the harvest, we have all, always a party, it's called Adiafa. It's to, to celebrate the end of the harvest. Yeah. And this is, remember the pressing machine over there, the yellow ones? This is the same thing, but an uh, old one. <laughs> and after that, wine goes to this side, to these vats over here, where they're gonna start the fermentation, okay? And wine stay here, every the in the um, grape juice to wine and after that because two years ago we didn't have machinery to control temperature wine goes, goes to these things over here big big events over here so sometimes you can think also you can see a little bit of wine it's really really old wine it stays actually it's not wine anymore just a, a liquid <laughs> like vinegar for example um, but wine to control temperature it goes to this above us, okay? But if you go, for example, to Douro Valley, to port producers, we have also some producers that say they still are working with this type of, um, of um, structures, yeah. Oh, really? 
<laughs> but no, we have uh, upstairs, we have, they are open, yeah. And here we have the, the first bottles. We just started using uh, bottle in 1997. And this was the first bottle in 1997, the first brand, Terras du Po. Labels are completely different right now. They are not the same, of course. They change it with the years. And here we have old bottles. Don't have only the red wine, it's here, the first one. And then we have our top wine, the first top wine that we have, Rodermore. Well and they have the very good Muscatel and, very, and the, the oldest that we have also here. We don't have very, very old wines because we just started bottling in 97. That's why you cannot find all the old wines from this house. Now, we're going to see some um, parts of the story. Okay. Aguardente. Aguardente. <laughs> we don't produce Aguardente, we don't produce the vinical spirit. This is just to, to people see um, all the artifacts that belong to the distillery. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very common in any place in the country that we use whiskey, vodka, for example. It's very, very common. <laughs> now we don't produce. We, we buy the vehicle spirits mm -hmm. to produce the muscatel. We buy. And then we have very interesting things over here. We have, for example, personal things, for example, this is a pressure cooker, okay? This is, that one is a extinguisher over there. Yeah. I know, I don't know. You know? <laughs> and a few years ago, in groceries, we didn't have packaging, yeah. kilo packaging, so we have a lot of waste. This Portugal artifacts, guys. Uh, okay. <laughs> Culture, culture, yeah, it's very uh, the Portugal culture, yeah. Sometimes in the groceries, a year is ago, you can buy um, a glass of wine, uh, one liter of beans, one liter of uh, rice. It was very common. Uh, actually, they didn't call it kilo, uh, but a liter, liter of rice, liter of yeah. And there's a lot, for example, you can see here the seeds and beans and everything. We didn't have any packaging like nowadays, of course, so everything was ate. <laughs> oh, good, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you could find this type of things in the groceries, and it was normal to have wine and people buy a glass of wine. Now it's different. One unit. <laughs> Now we're going to see the last step, the warehouse, where you can find all the wine that we have. Mm -hmm. And then the best part, the tasting part. <laughs> <laughs> we have to come in the summer to enjoy the swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can put uh, uh, white wine inside the pool. <laughs> 
was a nice idea. <laughs> Drinking and nice swimming. Idea, yeah. <laughs> tracks over there, they're not can see from this side, just to fill wine. We have the little wine here, the Rosario, it goes to Russia, you see? <laughs> that goes to Russia. <laughs> now we're gonna see our cellar, uh, the best cellar to have with the best wine. Now we are changing to new barrels, wine to new barrels, because the top one is just new barrel, the best oak that we have, and that's why here you can feel a lot the, the oak, the oak uh, aroma. Mm -hmm. These are new barrels, for example. Here you can feel. They are very clean, actually. <laughs> and our best one is just new barrel. Uh, our best one is 18 months in oak, okay? So, and with the characteristic of the wine, our wine is very gastronomical and full bodied, okay? and very structured and um, we have single ones for example over here we have a 50-50 one here and the Muscatel I'm just gonna close that door because we're not mm -hmm. white, okay, very fresh and fruity this one has Fernão Pires, it's a white grape from this area, very common in this area. And then we have Arinto, it's a grape that gives some acidity to the wine. This wine is very aromatic in flavors, very in a role where it's like tropical fruits, it's an easy drink. It's very Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's a wine that costs 2 euros and 25 here. It's not structured, not it's easy going, so it should take by itself, no food. It's a nice flesh and quality rice one. Yeah. One for the table. Yeah, one for the table, exactly. 
if you don't want to drink all your beer, the spitting one. Then we have, for example, cheese from this area, uh, strong trees from Mazay Town. This is handmade bread. This is jam, okay, fig jam. We have chorizo, okay, sausage. <coughs> <laughs> Who's driving? Who? You are your own. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, we have the Sauvignon Blanc and Verdade. Uh, so 50-50%. Sauvignon Blanc in this area is going to be a very aromatic wine. Okay? Um, that's why we put a little bit of Verdade. That it's here Portuguese grape also that it's drier, okay. And this wine also has um, is a little drier compared with the Sauvignon Blanc, of course, and has a nice acidity. This one stayed four months in oak. It's a little more stronger compared with this one. It's uh, completely different, okay. And the price of this is more or less six euros and twenty-five. A little bit. If you don't, can put it. <laughs> this one is better with some fish in the oven, and to me, it's a winter white. Okay, because it's more full bodied. Thank you. It's a more gastronomical white, also. It's more food. Okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> this one, this one of course, it's much more easier drinking than this one because it's something easy going, and this one it's more full body. It needs more food. Okay. This needs a nice fish in the oven, for example. This one. We have we have reds and whites for all the styles of people. Okay. And I brought something completely different just to try all the difference that we have. So, this mango uh, is 100% Merlot for 2015. It has 12 months in oak. That's new oak, okay? It was in our best seller over there. Uh, wines here, when they are really young, like this, three years here, it's very young because wines here are full-bodied because of the weather and also the oak is very new so you will feel the oak in this one it's a fruity one and remembers also a spicy side because of the French oak also um, and this one the price is 7 euros and 50 cents it needs more like a, a nice beef for example and this, this one is our, it's one of our uh, lighter reds that we have in this style, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's full body already, but uh, it's one of our lighter reds in this, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one is 14 degrees, okay. But because of the oak, it's really, really, it's new, it's a new oak and 12 months, you feel a lot of the oak in this one. And um, the year 2015, was really good, but it was really dry and powerful. So wines are really powerful also. But Merlot, it's one of the lightest grapes that we have. Yeah. And wines. For example, we have a Petit Verdot that it's really, really strong. Lots of um, tannins and estrogen in the mouth. This one, it's a uh, lighter. <laughs> but our reds in this in this this style, okay, they are full bodied. Okay, and with food. They need food, a nice beef. Yeah. It's not something to, to drink with a salad, for example. <laughs> if you wanna eat some cheese. So <laughs> cheese. <laughs> it's a wine that you drink to us, to me for example, um, it's a light wine. Because we have full body ones compared with this. Yeah, they are different. Yeah, for example, we have a Petit Verdot that it's more, much more structured. Yeah. Um, of course, we have wines with no oak, they are really, really light and elegant. But this style, they are, and because they have new oak, 12 months in new oak, you feel a lot of the oak aroma and everything. Mm -hmm. Anything. 
strawberry. Mm -hmm. This is also 100% Cabernet and there's also 12 months in oak. All these wines with these colors and everything have 12 months in new oak. That's also wines to age more time in the bottle. Okay, they need time to lose the side of the oak so they want to be much more uh, smoother in the mouth at the time. Okay. Let me check if I have a syrup, okay, to check if I have something different. <laughs> so, this syrup from 2016 is the new syrup, it was launched like two months ago. Syrah in general is a rounder um, grape, it's very uh, red fruits like strawberries and cherry. Uh, but this one you also feel the, the oak because you have also 12 months in new oak. But they are completely different compared to each other. I open now so that's why it feels a lot the aroma of the oak. Okay. New oak here. Yeah. Because this grape, it's more round in the mouth. It's not so the trees and here and the, the cork fields. It's different. It's uh, more fruitier also. Um, it, it's different grape, of course. We have a lot of different grapes to so have different wines. So it's also a personal taste that is important in this, this thing. Syrah con café. Syrah con café, muito it's nice also with um, cheese, this, this wine also. Very nice with cheese. Enjoy, enjoy, don't worry. We have time. Yeah, we have wine. We have wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's my style. Of course. <laughs> Sometimes I, I went home and I'm, I'm gonna see in the mirror. Sometimes I have here like wine and beer. <laughs> so don't worry, it's a style. A simple style. And now, of course, the Muscatel. Muscatel, it's a fortified wine. It's the sweet wine, like a dessert wine, or like a digestive. It has brandy itself, it has vinegar spirit, and that's why it's so strong and sweet. In general, it's very nice to make with some orange cakes, okay? Enjoy! Thank you thank very you. much! Thank you! And thank you! <laughs> it has the name of the grape, it's also Muscatel, it's the name of the grape and also the name of the wine, okay? It's 100% Muscatel, the grape, and it has two years in oak, okay? That's why it has also a darker color, because it's an oxidation of the color, okay? This one stays in that warehouse over there, and it needs sun, okay, and the, uh, the hot climate, okay, weather to go and to oxidate, okay? So that's why it's also uh, brown, and um, it's very interesting color, and the aroma, it's, you feel the orange side, the honey, yeah, it's very interesting. And in general, Muscatel is a very, uh, very nice quality price. 
For example, look at all this one, it costs 5 euro and it's something that uh, to me is something very good in terms of relation quality price. Yeah. And if you drink more than one glass, it's kind of gonna be complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Favaios, because Favaios, it's a Muscatel from the north side of Portugal, it's a different grape. It, this one is a Muscatel Graudo, a Muscatel de Setúbal, and the, um, the north side is a Muscatel Galego. It's a different type of Muscatel. And that side is more acid, and here you feel I really prefer the Muscatel Setúbal, because it's more full bodied and the aroma of the orange and the honey is different compared with the north side. They are different, yeah. <laughs> but I really enjoy the Muscatel, yeah. It's very nice also with some uh, nuts and some dried fruits also. It's really good. Nice cake. Muito gostoso. Muito gostoso. We have one of the biggest, well, the biggest uh, um, um, spot of water above us. We have like one meter and Haiti. We have lots and lots of water in Portugal and Spain. It's the biggest one. Yeah, it's the biggest sheet of water that we have here. So that's why you can feel a lot. Uh, even when the year it's really really dry. We have lots of water, however, so it's not problematic in general, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Muscatel? Nice. <laughs> this beer is for, only for Muscatel. Only for Muscatel. <laughs> yeah, Muscatel is something that it's not easy to find in all uh, in other countries, of course. Um, something similar, you have uh, Muscatel from Spain. But it's, it's different, uh, different styles, different okay. wine. But I prefer this one actually, not because it's it belong to this area, but I prefer because of the flavors and the aroma, they're much more interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any doubts or something? Any information that you want just to know? No, no problem. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> It's a big grape, and the flavors are completely different, even in the grape. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to drink more, you can drink more, of course. Mm -hmm.
But we have also, you have also very, very good vodka. I really like nice vodka. <laughs> that one, it's um, when the harvest, for example, this one, the harvest is for less in October. Mm -hmm. When the grapes are really, really sweet, we harvest that grape. So the one, it's a white wine. It's a very sweet white wine. Okay, almost with rotten uh, grapes. Okay. Um, it's very nice with desserts. It's not like muscatel. It doesn't have Atos. any. Atos. Yeah, yeah. Because the grapes are picked up a little bit um, after the, the harvest. Okay, so the grapes are white grapes and they are very shrink. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in aroma and alcohol, they are very very high. That's why the, the wine is naturally sweet. Okay, oh with no brandy. Twelve fifty. Obrigado. Mm -hmm. oh, you want one? Okay. Obrigado. Oh, what are the 